What's up guys, it's Kev here. Today we're gonna to be going over why I think you are writing too many songs. And as a singer-songwriter myself, it, is, it almost feels like sacrilegious to hear such words. But it's true and I've got a whole bunch of reasons why. My name is Kev Rowe, I'm a playlist curator on Submit Hub. I'm also an artist, I've released 10 albums on Spotify and over 150 songs. I have a playlist network on Spotify with almost 20,000 followers on it. These are active playlists of people all over the world listening to independent music in all genres. So yes, I'm a, I'm a playlist curator and I listen to music pretty much all day long on many different websites, Submit Hub, Playlist Push, um, Sound Campaign, and of course on my own personal pleasure. Why I think you're writing too many songs? Well, let me first tell you about my experience as a playlist curator on Submit Hub. Every day I go in, I listen to between 50 and 100 songs right now. And they're again, they're in a wide variety of genres. One of my pet peeves, and this happens quite a bit, is that an artist will send me all 10 songs of their new album all at the same time. <clears throat> so I'm getting all their material, everything that they've recorded in the last year all at once. And that's kind of annoying as it is, but that's a separate video. The, the aspects of this that I want to describe today are the fact that as I'm listening to these, these songs, I'm starting to hear patterns. And the biggest pattern is this. They all sound the same. Like every single song sounds just like the last one. So when I say you're writing too many songs, really what I mean is, is you're releasing too many songs. We'll go into more how I can help you figure out which songs to be releasing here in a few minutes. But yeah, while I'm listening to these 10 songs, they all sound the same. They're all in the same key. They all have about the same beats per minute. The production styles are all the same. The writing is all the same. The, the musicians who are on it, if there are any, are all the same. It, it just all sounds like the same stuff. And the biggest reason I'm making this video well, maybe it's a stance for quality over quantity. That's absolutely true. But I think a bigger reason for why I want you to work more on the winners. And really, it's all about one thing, experimentation. Experimentation takes time. And artist development takes time. You have to experiment as an artist with your songs, your production styles, the teams you're working with, the lyrical content, just everything requires experimentation. You've got to like be really creative with your work. That will get people's attention so that they're always going, what is this guy going to do next? That's what you want from your audience. You don't want them saying, here comes another song that sounds exactly like the last one that they promoted just like the last one. It's too much, too much sameness. Yeah, so this experimentation factor is really important, and it takes time. The other thing I wanted to talk about pretty in depth, pretty deep in depth, is the cycle, the life cycle of a song. Now, this was really important. Like as singer songwriters, one of our jobs is to be able to recognize when a song is dead. <laughs> and I hate to say it, but every song has a life cycle of its own. Some last 10 years, some last a week, and everything in between, some last 50 years, if you're lucky enough to write, have those songs be blessed upon you. But I'm talking about songs that can last an hour all the way up to a hundred years. That's a big life cycle for a song. And it's no different than human beings. Some human beings die 
coming out of the womb and live 10 minutes. Well, that's pretty graphic and morbid. I hate, hate to say it. Some last to be 110 years old. Like, a song has its own life. And as musicians, it's one of our jobs to make that determination when we've seen a song die. <laughs> and it's a pretty complex process, actually, that involves a lot of different things. Experimentation being one, feedback being the biggest one. Like actually getting this song on other people's ears, in their minds, in their emotions, seeing what it does to them. And as the impartial musician, watching that happen, saying to yourself, oh, that didn't work. I know when things work, that didn't work. This song is on its last limb. And maybe you give it another week, you play it for a few more people, and okay, it's died. Take it back to the shed and just say goodbye to this one. <laughs> because that song had, a, had its own life. Maybe it lasted two weeks, and now it's dead. And once you make that determination that the song is, go is dead, you don't have to release it to the entire world and promote it and go on this huge spree of like spending money on it and releasing it on Spotify and pitching it to me on, on Submit Hub and marketing it on social media and doing all this stuff because you have determined early the song is dead. Like there's no reason beating a dead horse. So getting feedback from people is really important in this life cycle of a song thing. And many times, in, in like in my world, it requires playing the songs live. Like going out and doing gigs and doing shows. And I'm not talking like two. I'm talking a hundred. Playing the song over and over again in different environments and getting feedback from all those environments. Because you may find there are exceptions like... You may play a song in a bar somewhere and it doesn't work and then you play it in a restaurant and, and everybody actually loves it. And they come up to you afterwards and say, I really love that song that you just played. And you're like, wow, I didn't expect that. That's great. Or you play at a festival and it like everybody loves it. So the environment that you're playing the songs in definitely helps you determine whether or not they're worth keeping around. And this can be true for studio producers, uh, rap artists, country musicians, beat makers, dance producers. It's true for all the genres. You need to get feedback, whether it be from, like, it, if you're a, a DJ, you take it to the local um, pub and somehow ask the, the bar owner to let you play your song for these people over the radio. Or, you, or you're just like more of a digital musician and you spend most of your time on the computer. Send it to the people you trust and be like, yo, my new banger, what do you think? Send it to them through DMs and just get feedback. You know when people are digging something and you have to be able to accept when they're not. So some of this comes with the, the, the idea that you're going to get lots of rejection in the world, but you don't, don't take it personally because you're just going to keep writing songs. Like, the next one will be a winner. <laughs> or the next one after that. So it's about, uh, it's, it's about being Wade Boggs and having a 350 batting average in a month or something like that. Uh, if you don't know Wade Boggs, he was a, he was a famous uh, baseball player for the Boston Red Sox. And he had this incredible batting average, like hits, you know. So I think it was like, I don't know, 340 or something like that, which is incredible for a baseball player. And that's all we're looking to do. Now, are you a home run hitter? <laughs> Maybe you are. Maybe you're a Barry Bonds and you like to shoot for the fences. That requires experimentation. Like all the home run hitters have the most strikeouts. I don't know how we went down this baseball lane, but it seems to work. Yeah, I mean, experimentation are your strikeouts. The ones where you take a big swing and miss, and it just falls flat on its face. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you create this, like, really creative technical song like that nobody's heard before, and you're hitting a, 
home run out into the parking lot. So it depends on what kind of artist you are. But across the board, I just think there are too many songs. You've heard the stats, like, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000 songs submitted to Spotify every day. That just means there are too many songs. We need more great songs, and that requires time and experimentation and patience and work and all those things. So yeah, let's get back to the time wasting. When you are making these determinations that you've got your winners and your losers, you're only going to promote the winners. You're only going to send me the winners. Like if if I hear all your winners on Submit Hub, my perception of you as an artist goes up by like a hundred times all the other artists. It's so obvious to me as a as a curator and just as a an original music fan, when someone is submitting to me their absolute best stuff and only wants me to hear it, or they're just sending me every idea under the sun that they've got, hoping that something goes through. No, that kind of hurts you. It makes you look like an average artist. You need to look like a great artist. So just send me your, your best stuff. So again, if you're the, if you're the exception, I know there are, there are exceptions to every, every rule. Like if you're on a hot streak and let's say you're 23 and songwriting is new to you and you just keep getting ideas over and over and over again. Keep writing those songs. I'm not saying to lower the amount of ideas that you're having. You want infinite ideas. Like over and over and over again. I mean, I would just keep doing that until the end of your life as many ideas as you can possibly have. Inspiration is a beautiful thing. No doubt. So if you're in that hot zone, you're like Barry Bonds and I don't know, what was it, 98? (laughs) When they were hitting all the home runs. Keep writing. But if you're not in that and you're you're admitting to yourself, okay, I'm I'm in my normal cycle, just send me less songs and make it all the best stuff. That's the stuff that people want to hear. Like, think of all your favorite artists on Spotify. Two or three songs come to mind, right? That's all you need. Sure, catalog is important. 100, 150 songs on Spotify is important, and it takes those to maybe get to the two or three. But just remember, there's like a pyramid here of the absolute best stuff the somewhat good stuff, and then the garbage. And do not release the garbage. (laughs) Nobody wants to hear it. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, it was good talking to you guys today, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.